Is tea healthier than coffee or is it the other way around? Which is the best drink for you? One similarity between tea and coffee is both drinks contain caffeine, but very different amounts. Ground brewed coffee has about 100 milligrams of caffeine per cup, while instant coffee, on the other hand, has about 60 milligrams of caffeine. It's got less caffeine. And decaf has even less, not zero, but a lot less. It has some residual caffeine. As for tea, black tea has about 50 milligrams of caffeine per cup, so not that different from instant coffee, surprisingly. Green tea has less, about half of that, so about 28 milligrams of caffeine per cup. And then herbal teas like chamomile have no caffeine. But there are some types of tea that are pretty high in caffeine. So matcha, for example, which is powdered green tea, has about 70 milligrams of caffeine per cup. And yerba mate has as much as 85. So tea can actually contain a substantial amount of caffeine, depending on the type of tea. But the thing with tea is it also contains this other molecule called L-theanine, which is an amino acid that crosses the blood-brain barrier and can influence your nervous system. And that helps give you that smooth, calm energy of tea and less of a crash, as opposed to coffee, which hits a lot harder and gives you that characteristic alertness and adrenaline. There's also a host of other molecules in both tea and coffee, a host of other phytonutrients with all kinds of beneficial effects. So coffee, for example, has something called chlorogenic acids, which have an antioxidant activity, while tea is high in catechins, which have anti-inflammatory and also some metabolic benefits. So that's regarding the composition. Now let's look at the net effect of these two beverages on human health. Starting with heart health, both drinks, coffee and tea, generally link to benefits, lower risk of heart disease in the general range of two to five cups a day. Now this varies a bit depending on the specific type. So for black tea, for example, there's some evidence that the sweet spot is a little lower, around two or three cups a day, and above four cups a day, the benefit seems to go away. While for green tea, we see a continuous trend of benefit increasing with more green tea intake. Also under this umbrella of heart disease, if you have cholesterol issues, if your cholesterol numbers tend to run a little high, you wanna be careful with unfiltered coffee because coffee contains some molecules called diterpenes, which can raise your cholesterol level. Now diterpenes are removed by filtering, so that's one strategy, and also instant coffee, interestingly, the process of making instant coffee removes diterpenes. So either of those approaches work. And lastly, careful with the additives, the cream, the sugar, all the stuff that we add on top of the coffee or the tea. Often that's more the issue and not the drink itself. Okay, next, cancer. And the evidence is actually stronger for coffee in this chapter. So we consistently see lower risks of liver cancer in coffee drinkers compared to non-drinkers, also endometrial cancer, and also a possible linked to lower risk of colorectal cancer in coffee drinkers. With tea, the evidence is more unclear, more up in the air. There's a possible link between tea intake and lower risk of oral cancer, but in general, for most cancer types, no consistent link with tea intake either way. So I would hand this one to coffee. Neither drink is harmful as far as cancer, but we see a stronger link with lower risk of certain types of cancer with coffee. While we're talking about cancer, there is a link between either drink and higher risk of esophageal cancer if the drink is consumed very hot, like 65 centigrade or higher, regardless of whether it's tea or coffee. So whichever you choose, let it cool down a bit before you sip. Another chapter, metabolic disease, metabolic syndrome, and we see a lower risk of metabolic syndrome linked to both coffee and tea. Similar for brain and mental health, we see both tea and coffee linked to reduced cognitive impairment and reduced dementia risk and in the range of two to four cups a day. So both healthy drinks, both mainly connected to benefits. Coffee has stronger evidence when it comes to cancer prevention, especially liver cancer. And for people who are looking for that jolt, that uh, alertness, then coffee is going to have an edge. Pun intended. On the other hand, for people with caffeine sensitivity who get anxiety or tremors or jittery with coffee, also for people with insomnia, with issues with sleep, and for people who are shooting for that relaxing, calm feeling, then tea might be a better choice for you. And lastly, avoid large doses of caffeine from any source if you're pregnant 
And if you have iron issues, if your iron levels are a little low, be aware that coffee and tea can inhibit the absorption of a type of iron called non-heme iron. With tea having a stronger effect, a stronger inhibitory effect. So avoid drinking coffee and tea real close to meals if you have that issue. If you drink it an hour or more before or after meals, you should be fine. And remember, regardless of your drink of choice, careful with the temperature and careful with the additives, the sugar and the creamer and whatever else is added. For a lot more on the link between coffee and cancer, check out this video and I'll see you in there.